Hey guys, it's Jonathan here from Set Sail, and today I'm going to be talking about how to get good audio on your home recordings and your live streams. So a month ago I put out a couple of worship sessions from here in my room and put them out on my personal YouTube channel and had a bunch of questions from people asking all about the specifics, what gear am I using, what effects am I using. So I'm going to talk through some of that today. So let's start off talking about equipment, okay? There are going to be some essentials that you'll need. You may have these already, but you'll need some kind of microphone with an XLR cable. You're going to need an instrument with the instrument cable. You're going to need a computer and an audio interface. The audio interface is probably the crucial thing that I'm going to be spending the most time talking about here. Interfaces come in all different shapes and sizes and price points and they all have different features but essentially they all do the same thing which is they're going to have a number of inputs and a number of outputs. Okay, so This is the interface I used to use. I recently switched because um, this was a Firewire interface and my new computer doesn't have that input. This one has two inputs on the front which can be either XLRs or jacks. It also has two on the back and it has six outputs. Um, so I can connect microphones, keyboards, all of that stuff, and I can also have outputs which go to my speakers or headphones. For the purposes of this, all you're going to need is two inputs and two outputs. So we can connect a microphone and an instrument and output to some speakers or headphones. So to begin with, I'll talk about my setup and then I'll show you guys some other options that you can do too. So my keyboard, I have a Nord Electro 5D. Um, this is one of the lightest, it's only semi-weighted keys. Um, and cheaper end of the Nord uh, keyboards. They are expensive keyboards, but um, the sounds on them are amazing and just to be able to plug a keyboard in and know you've got a really solid piano sound and um, it's been really reliable. I've been traveling with it for years, so you can MIDI control sounds from your computer if you want to, but most of the time I literally just plug a jack cable into the back and I use the piano sounds on here, usually the upright grand or grand studio, all those kind of sounds. I also have this microphone, which is a Shure SM7B. I'm sure you've seen these in almost every live worship video at the moment. Um, I have this little arm, which just screws onto my desk. And I have an XLR cable, which goes around to my interface. Okay, so this is my interface. It's a Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. I have it underneath this, which is where I set my monitor. So it kind of just sits underneath the monitor stand. Um, this has one input on the front for instruments and it has two around the back for XLRs or jacks. Um, also has, I think, four outputs on the back. I'm using it to output to these monitors right now, which are Yamaha HS5s. So this jack cable is connecting my keyboard to the interface and the microphone is connected through the XLR at the back. So then I have my computer, which is a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this all runs off USB-C, so I have an adapter which goes to um, my HDMI, to the monitor, and this is the USB-C cable which goes to the interface. Okay, so in terms of live streams, um, you have two options really. You can pre-record your audio and your video, or you can literally do it live. And this will depend on what kind of thing you're doing. A lot of people were asking about the worship sets that I uploaded to my YouTube channel, which were actually pre-recorded, they weren't live-streamed. Uh, I just set up my camera, hit record on everything, captured it in a one take, and then later I went in and mixed the track, added all the effects, synced it back up with the camera footage, and edited it together, exported it, and then uploaded it to YouTube. So you can do that, you can also export those videos and use them in a live-stream, for example, say it's a church service, um, maybe you just want to take some time the day before or the week before and pre-record a little set of worship, um, take some time to mix it, to film it well, and then you can just play that video through Zoom or OBS or StreamYard or whatever software you're using to live stream. And that way you can guarantee good video and good audio and it's all covered. However, there are going to be situations where you do actually want to live stream, maybe you want to have some interaction with people watching, or um, for example, at Manchester House of Prayer, where I serve, we're doing live stream prayer and worship sets uh, with another person who's prayer leading and um, praying with the worship and there's interaction going on, it all happens live. So um, in that environment, you want to actually live stream. Okay, so first off, here is the audio control on my audio interface. Um, you can see when I speak through my microphone, you can see the audio jump in here and when I play piano, see it jumping on there as well. From here I've set the gains, so the mic has quite a low gain, so I've turned the gain up pretty high. 
also on the keys there's a little boost there. Um, coming over to... <laughs> I don't actually need to speak into that mic now, do you? Coming over to Ableton Live, I set my input to be the audio interface and also my output so that it's output into the speakers. And then from here in my audio setup, I make sure that uh, the audio is coming from external input. Uh, channel 1 is the piano. Channel 2 is the microphone, which means in Ableton I can hit record and play piano and talk and sing at the same time, and it records both. So I have both my piano and my audio in two separate channels now. In terms of what I do on here, I keep it very simple. I normally put an EQ um, on both channels. I'll do things like a low cut, just to take out unnecessary details, specifically in a vocal. I'll take that out and I'll also boost the high end. That kind of brings in some of the nice kind of high end of the vocal, the breathy sounds. Um, and sometimes I will find wherever the letter S is. I'm going to say something with a lot of S's in, like spices. <laughs> um, spices. There's this little sharp section here. Spices. There's like a real whistly frequency on that S. So I might just tune that out. And that means that I can bring up the high end without those S sounds being really like really sharp. And then keys, I normally don't do a lot. Again, I might just cut the low end because we don't need the real low end on a piano. And then all I'm doing in Ableton is adding a compressor. Um, I like to use maybe like a four to one ratio. Uh, bring the threshold down about where the audio is bouncing. And then I'll do something simple like a reverb. Um, I can just use like a church reverb bring it down to like, because we're playing church music, right? It's got to be in a church reverb. Yeah, bring it down to like 15% or something. Not very much. Cool. So there's a, a quick example of how I would mix very briefly um, both keys and a vocal on a simple channel. That's all well and good, but what if you want to actually live stream? Well, principle is the same, so in your streaming software, here in Zoom's preferences I can set my microphone as the Universal Audio Thunderbolt, um, or whatever interface you have. So now when I talk in my microphone here, and play my piano, so now my sound is coming through the audio interface and not through the inbuilt microphone. But what if you want to do this on a live stream and have reverb and have compression and all of that kind of stuff? Well. This is where it's going to start to depend on the features of your interface. So, as I mentioned, the one I'm using is a Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. And this interface is a little more expensive than a lot of the entry-level interfaces. With that comes some extra features. It has some really nice built-in preamps. And it also has um, some effects and units that you can put on the input level of the input side of the interface, if that makes sense. So, and the interface will come with a few free plugins in Universal Audio's case. So I can show you here some of the things that I use. I have the UA610B preamp. So this microphone actually has a very quiet input, so you're gonna have to either have an interface which is good at boosting gain and preamps, or um, use something like a cloud lifter, which is something you can connect the microphone to before it goes to the interface, and that will boost the gain and the level of it. So. In this case, the interface does a good job. So this UA610B is what I use just to up the level, and I do a tiny little bit of shaping with the preamp. So I take some of the low end out, and I boost some of the high end, which is basically that EQ that I was doing in Ableton, cutting out the low. That's basically all I do with that. So I have that, and then I have my Real Verb Pro. Again, this comes with Universal Audio, it's included. I don't love this reverb, honestly. It's, it's like, it's fine. It's okay, does the job. Uh, I have it on a 9% mix here with a preset of medium bright hall, I think that is. And then I have the LA2A plugin, which is a compressor. So when I speak into the microphone, you can see the compressor jump in. I think I have this on pretty heavy, actually. So here you can see there's a little switch. These things can be done as inserts on the recording side or on the monitor side. If they're on the monitor side, that's effects that I'm applying just to what I'm hearing in the monitors, but it's not on what's being recorded. So you want to make sure these are inserts on what's being recorded sound. So this may be like super techy, and you might be watching this thinking, I don't have a Universal Audio 
interface, so I can't run all these effects. It is worth looking up what software you have that comes with your interface. Pretty much all audio interfaces will have some kind of software like this, and you may be able to add some plugins on the input side. All I can really say is look up manuals and tutorials of your specific interface, because um, I can't really talk through all of them right now. I want to share some other options, but before I do, let me show you a quick test that I do. So again, using Ableton, you can use GarageBand, you can use Logic, you can use Audacity, whatever kind of audio software you have is, is totally fine. One of the things that I will do once I've set all of this stuff up and the gains, um, I have to be aware that I can control the level here from what I'm hearing in the monitor. So let's say I want to hear some more sound in my speakers of the piano while I'm live streaming and less of the microphone. I can control that here, but it is not affecting the level of what goes out on the live stream. That's affected by the gains by the level of the input that's coming in. So what I like to do is test it with Ableton or whatever music software you use. So I hit record. La 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 la. La 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 la. Okay. I record a little sample like this and loop it. Okay, so I could hear that and think actually the mic level is a little bit low there or the piano is a bit high and I can go into my interface and just turn down the gain of that piano, test it again. So I'll do a little bit of work beforehand just to make sure that those levels are good. Um, and this is a good test of like, this is what it's gonna sound like on the live stream. This is not how it's sounding out of my speakers because the levels can be different. Okay, so if your audio interface is not one that comes with inbuilt effects and presets and things that you can use, you could get yourself a pedal, something like this. This is a Boss VE20. This is a vocal processor pedal, full of different effects such as reverb, it can add harmonies if you want that, it can uh, do a little bit of compression. You plug an XLR into the input, another one coming out of the output, and you can control reverb coming down the mic channel, going straight into your interface. So this is kind of a hardware way of doing what the Universal Audio software would do. Um, the other thing is guitar pedals. You can actually plug effects pedals in to your chain before it goes into the input on your interface. So if you wanted to add like some reverb, some compression pedals or chorus or whatever you want to do. Yeah, maybe with your guitars or um, with different things you want to do. Even vocals, you can actually run through effects pedals if you want to. This can all get very complicated very quickly, so I'm trying to make sure I keep it pretty simple. Um, but feel free to leave comments with your solutions as well. Um, obviously there are quite complicated setups you can do with software like OBS. There are ways of installing software interfaces, which means you can output from your DAW, like Ableton or Logic, with all of the effects, output that to a live stream. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video because I haven't fully figured it out myself, but I do know it's possible. I wanted to briefly mention another thing at the end, which is a way of connecting to a mobile device. Um, I've actually ordered a little Rode adapter, which they're sold out currently on Amazon because everybody's live streaming. Um, but yes, they look like this. What this means is that you can plug into your phone through the headphone socket in the same way that you would plug in like uh, iPhone earbuds with a little microphone on and it treats whatever you plug in there as a microphone input into your phone. So that means you can actually plug out of say the headphone socket on your interface, get a little jack which goes to a quarter inch mini jack, plug that into this adapter into your phone and that means you can live stream with the audio coming through your interface um, to a platform like Instagram and do it over IG Live or any, any kind of thing that you can live stream from your phone. You can use the audio from your instrument or interface or even a small mixer, maybe you want to plug things into a mixer and output to mini jack, plug that into your phone you might want to do that. So I hope this has been helpful. This is quite a difficult topic to cover all encompassing because everyone has different computers and equipment and all that stuff and different levels of knowledge. So please feel free to share your own comments if you found better ways of doing this stuff or you have more questions. Uh, we will do our best to get back to you. And if you're new here, feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, at Set Sail, we are all about exploring that space where faith meets art and we love to encourage, equip and inspire Christian artists and creators. So if that sounds like it's up your street, feel free to subscribe to the channel and check out our website, timesetsale.com. Thank you for watching the video and uh, we'll see you guys soon with another one.